Let's start with that Storm and Warriors game because there's so much to come out of it from just an incredible game standpoint. Uh, I lost my tip. That hurt on the on the buzzer. And uh, obviously some, some fantasy implications out of it. Obviously lovely to see Pat back doing great things. And yeah, some news, you have some talk around sort of talk with Harris as well. And uh, yeah, I suppose like we're looking at round one and then uh, see what happens in, in round two there as well. So to kick it off with, with Tohu there with his 36. So I was talking about him last week and, you know, it would have been great to be starting with him and I was annoyed with that and stuff like that. And and then he comes out and he gets 36 this week, obviously with a HIA, but he wouldn't have gone big this week anyway. There were some missed tackles through the middle. And, you know, if he played that full 80, expect around sort of a 45, even to a sort of a high 40s there. And, and still under what you, you are hoping for him, paying 750 So it shows that each round of Venerable Fantasy is very, very difficult and you can't get them right always. So we obviously had McInnes, we ended up trading. Right now we aren't sure how that's going to play out. McInnes for uh, for May or if we say McInnes for, for Talon um, instead of Terrell, then it hasn't worked out in that sense. But um, you know, if I traded for Toll Harris, I would have spent more money and got a 36. So it swings around about guys. I've had a pretty poor week myself in in fantasy and uh, I've seen other people that are well ahead of me at the moment, but I think I'm currently ahead. We'll see where, I, where, see where it shakes out, but I'm currently ahead of where I was at round two last year. So that's something to note. And if you're looking at your side as well and you're not happy with where things are at currently, uh, just keep that in the back of your mind as well that, um, yeah, we can we can go to Grindtown and, uh, and get back this rank no problem at all. And there were a lot of things that went wrong in the back end of last year as well and, and unluckiness and stuff like that. And I still finished 101st. So just um, don't stress about that coming into this. Obviously, uh, we need to stay a little bit positive. And the positive out of this game last night was that Pap got his 83 and looked incredible. So eight tackle breaks there, four offloads, guys. He was getting involved early, even a couple of forced dropouts in the back end of the game before he scored that try. And as it was obviously in- instrumental in helping them get a win in this match up against the Warriors and still I think the last 14 times 15 now that these guys have played each other the uh the Storm have got the win and and uh yeah I did tip the Waz and that try was one of the best you'll ever see and I got to enjoy it but it was on the on the back of being sad about my um six from six tips being uh destroyed by uh by that lovely try from Pap and then um I did get excited about the Pap one I was like they'll be able to hold off they'll be fine but um the momentum the six again after the charge down, it all happened. And uh, that try is very impressive. Xavier Coates, hats off to you, mate. You're um, an incredible finisher. That's uh, the, the high jump into the clip, which gets you higher. And um, his whole body outside the outside the touchline is, is very, very impressive. Uh, even Dallin would have been very impressed by that one. So, Pap, guys, if you um, did still hold on to him, thank God. It's 43% that have. You got the 83. His price rises now go bang right and that's the unfortunate thing about not owning him in this scenario but uh yeah again with one game to go before his buy round five has to be your target to get him in just keep that in mind and keep that in your plans to to grab him you got the you got the negative one in the first game and hopefully it's not a massive one for you guys in the third game before you can pick him up in round five and you don't miss out too much obviously just a 50 average across the first two games so not ridiculously crazy but definitely helpful for owners Jerome Hughes, guys, 68 for him to get a try saver. P- picked up a couple of try assists as well, a couple of line breaks. He's a very impressive runner of the footy, that's for sure. Great IQ as, as seeing gaps and little half gaps that he can zip through. But uh, 68 for him, good to see after a bit of a low one in the first. But again, you're looking at all of the Storm numbers. They're against Panthers in round one. More points happen in other games, pretty much always. So that's what you're looking at with these guys. Can they do it for a few weeks? Have a look at them next week and then and then look at it from there and decide. Uh, Ortiz Lesniak, 58 for him, a double. Good stuff on that front. He had plenty of games like this last year. Can he keep it up and get into the 650s potentially, but not someone you want to be targeting? Roger, 53 for him, guys. He had a very, very good game there. He runs the footy with absolute vigor. Seven tackle breaks, two offloads. Had a line break just not long before he got that trisis off the ground to, to Jackson Ford. So one answer, Roger. For those that there were a lot of questions this week, actually, should I trade RTS to Taylor May? I said no. So I'm glad with that. Hope that that's um, stuck with you guys because the 53, much better than the 34. And, and he's going to work into the season and they're a good team. He's got Metcalf next to him. He's playing really well also. So I do think that um, 
Rodgers is going to have a great season and, and be worth that 6.10 price point, non-origin, dual position. That's what you've got him for. Harry Grant, this is a sad one to kick things off. 249s for the start of the season. So, of course, how it works, right? You buy him when he's cheaper than he was last year. Last year, he absolutely brained him. This year, 249s and he's losing money. So, frustrating, especially when Robson's scoring better than him. Um, Brendan Smith hasn't played today, but yeah, he's scoring just the same at this point. Joey Lussick's even beating him out, who wasn't meant to have an 80-minute role. It's sad times for Grant Honus, that's for sure. But um, yeah, he'll, he'll bounce back. He will be fine. But um, we do need some bigger scores. And the sad thing with this one, obviously, there's some negatives in it, right? There's, what, 12 in negatives. Tackles were fairly low due to the high-scoring nature, right? But, you know, he had a line break in there. He had two tackle breaks. He had 97 meters gained. He had 90, 97 in kick meters. So there's a few points across the board. To still get 49, it's a little bit concerning. We do need to bounce back up. Um, and hopefully it does next week. If we can get a 70 from him next week, then yeah, he's, he's above his average. He's up to closer to a 60. But um, if he gets a 49 again, that's uh, that's tough to go into a buy. That's for sure. Uh, 40, 49 for Ford uh, with the try there. Better in this game, I'd say, overall. Adam Fanua Blake, 44. So back down to earth in this one. 21 tackles, as I said, with the, you know, the lower tackle number game. Obviously, that didn't help. Tall Harris, like Grant, was the highest there at 39. You've got Capewell at 34. And then you've got, where's Tohu? Tohu's 29. So very low for Tohu in this one. Uh, his run meters are still up at 154. But yeah, across the board, guys, 31 was the next in Alex, Alec McDonald and Freddie Lussick, who played 73 minutes in the middle. So yeah, tackles are low. Just keep that in mind when you're looking forward to next week. And that's going to help Grant a little bit as well. But did mean you get to run a bit more, obviously, with um, a bit more of a free-flowing nature of this game. Eli Katoa, guys, did you have to go for a HIA check? 44 in this one with a try assist. That was very impressive. Both Chan and Katoa, very, very impressive try assist back into PAP. So do you reckon they've practiced that one through the off season? I think so. Uh, yes, yeah, so Eli, again, still looking at him post, post by for sure. Trent the arrow, guys, 41, 70 minutes in the middle. Very, very impressive work at that. But uh, yeah, not someone we look to buy. He'll be around that 40 mark all season. Shout out to Coates again for the incredible try. Nick Meany's goal kicking, really, really good, actually. I think that's improved. And yeah, I uh, don't see Pap getting it back anytime soon, which is sad. But um, yeah, that's that. Good try at that. Um, still find his feet in, in the defense, defensive side of the ball, with obviously five missed tackles there. But uh, yeah, overall, I think he's improved. Tohu, if you own him, you're not selling him. It's just a bit of, annoy of annoyance, as I was talking about earlier. Joe Chan, I ended up playing him. was very happy with that try assist. Uh, meters gained, 88. He does look damaging enough when he runs the footy. They don't give it to him plenty, but enough to um, yeah do solid, solid work there. The 27 tackles for three misses. It's okay. As I said, guys, this this tackle, this this game worth of, of tackles is very, very low across the board. So 27 could, up, could be up closer to 35 or 40 in other games. And full 80 minutes is very, very good news there. We do have to note, though, that Christian Welch, Welch, Welch did get um, taken to... Sorry, he did fail a HIA. So he only had one stint. Does that mean Chan would have um, yeah, missed a little bit of time? I'm not sure. I don't think so. We'll have to you know, have to monitor that with their with their middles, obviously. Like you saw Alec McDonald get 34. Kamikamika get 54. So a bit of a jump in his minutes there. Um, but Welch only had 12 minutes there. You know, Lewis, 21. He came on early for, for Eli Katoa. Like, yeah, he had time off. So does that mean they were just going to have one of the back rollers play 80 and there was no point using those extra trade uh, changes to, to get Joe off? I'm not sure, but 36 gets his price rolling, which is exactly what we need. He'll be up 15 to 20K this week. Good stuff. And if you played him, sweet. If you played Strange and the like, even better. We'll get to them soon. All right, Rocco Berry, 34. It's probably the next one on the list. He, um, for those that own him, solid again, looking better than last year, which is great. Metcalf, guys, you're not taking the goal kicking off Johnson, so we haven't even seen Johnson's name yet, and that is concerning if that's going to happen longer term. He did miss two. He did make five, so that's very helpful, but yeah, like a couple of those, it's like, oh, one of them was really, really tough. One was like, oh, you probably, Johnson might have kicked that, you know, so I'm not sure what's happening with SJ. Like, he did come into the season with a little bit of a niggle. Kicked last week, though, so not sure what we think on that one, but um, Johnson, we might have a little bit of a worry on that. Two a picky guys had a lovely try assist. You know, heavens absolutely opened up when he got that ball out there. Four tackle breaks, couple of errors in there, couple of missed tackles. So not 
Not his best game, but still 33. You get another price rise out of him. Not a massive one, but sort of that 15K range, I believe it'll be, with that lower break even. So that's sweet. One more week, likely. So milk it for what it is, and then you may have to move him on. We'll see. See how that works out. Uh, from that, guys, Freddie Lastic, if you did bring him in 28 in 73 minutes, we were worried about his PPM. That was on full show here with no, no real running, 13 meters, tackle numbers, as I said, down a little bit in this game. And he wasn't able to get any attacking stats, which is what we're speaking about. Johnson next, guys. 26 for him in the full 80 minutes. Very, very annoying. That one was for sure, given he you know, kicked for 407 meters. He still ran the footy 70 meters, but um, nothing else outside of that. So a penalty, three missed tackles. The tackle numbers, as I said, were a little bit down. We're worried. If he's not getting goal kicks, that's another 10 points. There's 36, and it's still a very low game in general. Like you expect without the goal kicking, he's about a 40. Yes, this is against the Storm, and they'll have some slightly easier games. They've gone Shark Storm. Things will get a bit easier, and hopefully he can get that goal kicking back. We probably won't know until next week. So he's a hold next week, but it's a worry after his really good start, 60. You know, outdoing Cleary and Hines last week. All right, moving down. So yeah, Walsh got 21. Absolutely crushing it when he comes on the park with offloads and the like. But um, yeah, nothing further from that. He'll be out next week. Chanel Harris to Vita, eight minutes. His price goes down even further. Wish out the 14 minutes. I'll lay the 15 for, um, for Harris. I'm not even sure if Tom would have came on the field, but uh, that's that first game. Plenty in it. Ah, oh, the sad game. Actually, they're both sad games, to be honest. Raiders and Tigers, Cowboys, Knights for me and my team. And this is Adam Elliott one. Okay, confession, head-to-head team. Right, I've talked up Adam Elliott all year. Didn't start with him in my team. Started with him with the head-to-head team. And then coming into this week, seeing what Hutch- Hutcho did, <laughs> you, know what to, you know what I'm going to say. I traded him out for Fogarty in in the um in the head-to-head team. So I was really happy with Fogarty's score. And then Adam Elliott goes over for two tries in the first half. And I was like, cool. Anyway, positive note. Hopefully, please, please, please tell me there are a bunch of you out there that, that's, that bought him at the start of the season have held steady. I do. I have seen a few people reach out and say, you know, thanks for pushing me into Adam Elliott. But um, two tries, no misses for 44 tackles is absolutely wild considering what last week looked like, what the trial looked like. Like this is what he has in his game, especially with those minutes. What the hell is he doing playing 73 minutes? That's incredible in the heat too. So very impressive stuff. If you started with him, that's a huge price rise now. That's a 30, 35K or something like that price rise. What's funny is it would have been Elliot trade Elliot or trade Cotter in the head to head team for for Fogs just to just to spread the wealth a little bit spread yeah and that would have meant if I kept it the one trade I was doing it would have been Flanagan and that would have meant I just had Hacho and um and Cleary so I decided to go for Fogs Elliot was the guy thank goodness Cotter went well as well with sixty nine minutes for him a try saver for Cotter. 53 tackles there the one tackle break eighty one meters gained was massive so as I said. Plenty of ball in play in this one. A few errors, obviously, but yeah, a lot of the time it was just like back and forth, back and forth. Tackle, tackle, tackle. Run, run, run. As you see there, Robson, 47. Tackles for them. We, the Cowboys fans, big win, obviously, 21-20. Got a bit dicey, got a bit scary throughout the you know, the middle part of that game, but a good comeback at that. But uh, you're looking at that one and, um, yeah, just, said, just the tackles. Like the, the Cowboys didn't have the ball for the first sort of 20 minutes for the most part. Um, and that's where they got a lot of points early, especially Robson and Cotter, which was great. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with Cotter and the minutes that he was provided with. And, uh, yeah, there wasn't really too much of note, obviously like Lukey injury wise, but, you know, Fine Fuyaki end up playing late, like last week, they almost split the minutes. Like it was probably 15 minutes over that. And this week it was just a complete split Lukey and, and Fine with the injury, obviously. So Cotter there, the minutes may be slightly inflated, but I do think on a regular basis, he'll be around that 60. And if he can score anywhere near a point a minute, he's going to be an absolute gold mine uh, for making cash. So I'm very happy with that. And that was my bright spot of, of this game was Ruben Cotter. Super coach wise, lay butts, not great. Um, Ponga, not great. So yeah, there's um plenty to talk about in this one. That's for sure. Cotter, awesome. Townsend, great game sealer. Very, very happy with that. I picked up a try and a try assist. So awesome work from that flick pass from, from Carl Felt. Through the middle there. 
Uh, Robson goes. So he was the play, right? He ended up with a small line break there, worked out, a couple of tackle breaks, a turnover tackle. A few meters gained at 36, but 47 tackles. The misses have been lower to start this year, obviously, than the mid to late season last year. So that's that. Very, very happy with Robbo and his efforts. If you do own him, you're cheering, outdoing um, Grant for way less of, of a price. So that's that. Frustrating for Grants, as we know, but um, happy days for, for Robson owners. Jeremiah, 54, another try in this one, working hard. So 40 tackles for two misses, 100 meters gained. He might be a, he might just be a 50-point guy this year. Could be. Um, yeah, just look much, much better on the work ethic side of things, and that's what Bob was missing last year. So glad he's turned it around. Dan Gago, guys, 748, just continues to do his good work. Like he's basically scoring what he's priced at. As I said, I was hoping for Taylor May to be this, but um, yeah, like Gago just can make things out of nothing at this point. Like there might not be a gap on that side and, and he just makes it happen. So nine tackle breaks, good defensively again. 130 meters, a sneaky line break in there and a turnover tackle. He just seems to be involved in all of it. And uh, congrats to Gago. Felty, 51. So he ties Matty Bowen now, the mango. Very, very exciting. Therefore, for Cows fans, it's... Uh, yeah, he's obviously played for a long time and in amongst some some good teams, some poor teams at that. But uh, to get, get anywhere near Mango's record, uh, it's very, very impressive. So well done to Kyle. Hastings are 50. So he'll have these games, guys. It's a 50 and a half average to kick things off. And that's with lower kick meters as well. But he just doesn't seem to have the negatives in the last two games. So well done, Hasto. In two losses to average 50, he's making some cash and doing good things. Leo Thompson, 63 minutes in this one. So it was an interesting one, wasn't it? Just given that they didn't have sort of Kaipis, Paul and Lucas on there. They did lose Hetherington, I think, late after his first stint. But um, for Leo, I thought that he would get some bigger minutes this year. And in this game, it was to be. Last game, it wasn't. This game, it was. And and this was kind of a thought that he could step up into this type of role. Didn't think it would be 63, but ended up yeah working out for him. Dearden, 45 with a try, a couple of line breaks. He um, is looking better and better every year. What about the meters kicked in this one? So Drinkwater got a few, I believe, wherever he is. 19, actually, no, not really. Um, but yeah, so Townsend won. I oh, know Townsend was 339. I was looking at Hastings, sorry. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so it's pretty low across the board with Dearden only getting 21. Drinkwater, 19. Townsend, 339. It was just a lot of running of the footy. So Hastings, 196. Gamble 272. So yeah, it's a fairly low across the board on that front. But yeah, that's that. Dearden, good. McLean, better. He looked better as a, as a player this week. Drink water 42. Not super ideal. Obviously not getting involved in a lot. The one try assist there. A couple offloads. Running the footy plenty is all good signs, but he does lose a bit of cash. And, and, and is the worry when you start with wing fullbacks, gun wing fullbacks. And we've seen that with Ponga as well. It's very, very frustrating what can happen with these guys sometimes. And you either get on the lucky side of it and they come out and they go, you know, bang, like, you know, Isaac Tungo and these types of guys did, or they really go lowish in the 40 range, which is what we're seeing from a few of our top guns at the moment. And um, it is frustrating. It will turn around, guys, but it is frustrating to kick things off. And if things can kind of flow nicely and, and these guys can get the, their nice left to right passes, the right to left passes that we're seeing, you know, that Ponga isn't getting right now, then, um, it will, yeah, it's going to happen eventually, but it's it's frustrating at this point. All right, so that's that. Uh, See so yeah, it, Ponga 41, not great. Hold both of them, not great. Kobe Spall 39, so got the full 82 minutes or whatever it was. And um, yeah, 28 tackles, one tackle break. They got him down as no misses, which is helpful. So good, good start to his career on that front. Two penalties, one of them a dirty facial, disgusting. Get out of your game, Kai. There's no place for it. Um, 92 meters gain, you got the, the turnover tackle as well. So good stuff on that front. Finnet, he becomes a little bit more fantasy relevant, right? 272K. It looks like Luke, he's going to be out anywhere between sort of the three to eight weeks, given it was a high ankle sprain in all physio says. So does mean he has some space to move and make some cash. The 38 gets that rolling. And if it is closer to 80 minutes, we'll have to see who they put on the bench and if they have anyone as cover. But he did come on and play the full 58 following the injury to Lukey. So keep that in mind. Do expect some lower scores. Obviously, no attacking stats in this. It's good to see that his base stats were up a lot more. But again, across the board, this was a base stat heavy game through the middle. So yeah, that's something to note. But keep him in your thoughts for next week. He'll be in the two... 85 range, I think, 
which is very, very cheap at that. Same with Galvin, which we'll see shortly. It'd be very cheap there. Uh, Safedi boys still played 40 and 45 minutes. So there was minutes to go around there. Frizzell went off for four, five minutes there before extra time. Um, yeah, Griffin name. Really good PPM as well. As I said, middles were good. Tamalolo, 52 minutes, 33 points. Not good enough. He's selling him anyway at that. But the minutes were there. They'll be there every second game or something like that if they need him. But um, yeah, good stuff for Lolo getting through the 50 yard and getting another win for the cows. Val Holmes, guys, probably a bit of one, one to forget in this game. He has some of these games these these days, whether it's like defensively and the next game he, he absolutely crushes it. This one, it was dropping the footy. Um, you know, missing goals as well. So he had an off day. Hopefully he's fine and bounces back because, yeah, it wasn't uh, sunshine and rainbows for Val in this one. Greg Marzu picked up a try, but outside of that was kept fairly well contained there. 124 meters for two tackle breaks. If you own, you hold. There aren't a lot of 0.8%, but um, yeah, you're holding at that. Labor, chosen this one, sort of the second half, nothing really happened at all. He got most of his tackles in the first half, most of his runs in the in the first as well. He did look fairly gassed. I will, I will note that. I'm, I'm worried about that. Um, but yeah, 107 meters, no tackle breaks, no room to move at all in this one. So defensively, yeah, Knights were a lot better than that of Dolphins. But um, yeah, like he, he got cut out for that try. For Felt, there was a few things in this one. But um, if you did buy him this week, then yeah, a few people did. You're holding steady and hope for some more opportunities. That's all he needs in the next few weeks. Jake Cartwright came on, didn't come on on the edge for Kaipis Ball, but came on through the middle. He did well. I think he looked good in that in that small time. They ended up playing Cogger for 22 minutes, so that's where the extra minutes came for Elliot. They were very happy with how he was playing, and um, yeah, they stuck with most of their guys rather than going for Cogger as much in this one, so that was interesting. And then you had Sam McIntyre only get 16 minutes after playing 47, so that was the big worry with him was that it was you know heavily, you know minutes were heavily up. He basically switched minutes with with Tamalolo. So he got the extra 30 and McIntyre lost 30 at that. And then Luki to finish, guys. It sounds like he's got a longer term injury, three to eight weeks, anywhere between there once we find out more. But a nine for him in 27 minutes um, with an error, which was just a tap like of, of a kick and, and the one missed tackle. Nothing really got to happen for him in his 27 minutes. So that's frustrating. Yeah, we're going to have to sell. Sadly, and uh, he was just building up a nice break even. He'll be down closer to 500 now after the nine. And um, yeah, it's a sell. Who do you sell for? There's a few options. We'll get to them eventually. All right, let's finish it off with the uh, the absolute KFC crusher for those that didn't own him. And that's Zach Hosking there, 93 points. Even got an extra try out in the centers. So good on him. But um, yeah, line break, couple of line break assists, a try assist, tackles for no miss. Seven tackle breaks, two offloads, a turnover, and 138 meters. One penalty in that just to ruin the, the perfect score, but um, very, very incredible work from Hosking. And if you started with him, you've got 81 average in two weeks. And if you didn't start with him, you're in the bin, basically. That's how it works with this one. Sadly, sometimes these guys that are you know, a decent 3.5%. You know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of teams that I know and follow that, are, that have him in their side. So... Good for my head-to-head -head team, not good for anyone else, basically. Um, yeah, that's that. Hosking, 93. If we knew that he was going to be playing longer term, I probably would have bought him this week, but we just don't know. And I suppose I've got Smithies for that you know, question as well. I've got like Geordie Raps. How long is he going to be there? We've got Lukey now. There's a lot of different things happening, and it might just be a let go through the keeper and just hope that he doesn't go, <laughs> doesn't go over 60 against some of the better teams. And I suppose the thing to note here with the Raiders guys is that they were up against the Tigers in this one. And let's just go ahead and check out who the Tigers play next week so that we can load up all of our players on the Tigers. Oh my God, the Sharky. So Nico Hines, who's buying him this week? <laughs> That's the question. Do you buy, do you, you, who's buying Teague Wilton as well? But yeah, that's where it's that's kind of where it's at at the moment. There was a yeah shocking decision down that right hand defensively defensive side off a tap, just like a penalty. Seb Chris tapped it, faked to go right, went left, and then cut out and went to Xavier Savage, and he went through untouched, like thirty out. That was pretty disgusting. Plenty of other things that happened in this game, like you know incredible individual tries from Ethan Strange. Like 
lots of different things that, that may not happen in other games, but they did in this one, and that's all that matters. And uh, that's what you have to look for when you're playing against the Tigers. And uh, we do have a bright spot in the Tigers outfit, and that's Lockie Galvin and one the guy I spoke about all all preseason, thinking that he would um, at least play some good minutes at 14, but in the starting side, and and he played the full 80, and Sullivan got hooked, right for C- for Caesar, right, not hooked, whatever switch. But who's the main half? Galvin. Very, very clearly in this one. He ran the footy. He defended well. 22 tackles for no misses. That is the biggest stat there. Thought that he would be able to run the footy and defend. Didn't think he'd be defending that well, but it happened. Did have three penalties, and hopefully he can get a bit of that out of his game and, and the errors, and then, and the sky's the limit for Galvin. Obviously against him, you know, when he's going to lose most weeks, that makes it hard to go really, really big. But um, 43, I'm getting you my side next week. Nothing, nothing can can stop that. I don't think, and and at two fifty odd, it's a it's a bit of a no brainer. I think for most of us, you either went early this week, you started with him, or you're going now. And I don't think you lose out many ways because, like, if it's Galvin, if I brought him in this week, I played him over Chan, seven points. It helps, but uh, definitely helps my team. But um, not the end of the world. So you get him for twenty odd k extra. You got to wait, see how it actually played out, and then you can go. So yeah, Fogs fifty eight. Obviously really happy with his output as well. Try assist in that. A few missed tackles in this one. A couple of turnover tackles. So that really helped. But it's still a 50. It's still way on, well under his price point. So he's making money. Another 15 to 20K on that. Very, very good stuff for Fogs. And if you're looking to fix up your halves next week, Galvin may help that. But Fogarty can really help that, right? So that's that. Coruscant, guys, 58 for him. Did pick up an, a very easy try there. Lots of tackles there. Played the full 80. Couple of goals pretty much what you wanted. Like if you if you decided to start with him or you brought him in this week, it's exactly what you're looking for. A really good score that's going to kickstart his price rise. It's good stuff. Isaiah probably worked out well for him in the end. He was fairly low coming into the last 15 or 20 minutes. Got some tackle breaks, got some offloads and a line break assist in the, in the back end there to push his scoring to 55 and a bit above his break even currently, which is awesome. I suppose a big one here, guys, is Samuela Finu. 344 with the jewel, he looked a much improved player. That was the big thing out of this one. So a try saver and, and a try. No tackle breaks at that, but um, yeah, that's looking at 17 extra points from that. It would still be a 37, and the minutes that he that he received are 59. And and that if that's going to be the way off the bench going forward, we will have to talk about Safarth and the shocker that that ended up being. But um, yeah, 54 for Finu, 59 minutes. If he can keep that up going forward, he has 150k to make. Does he keep it up going forward at that three, at, even if it was the 37, taking away the 17? That's the question mark. A few people asked me about him and I definitely don't see it as being a bad thing. Just be aware though, that if he's not in the attack, if he's um, not able to make this many tackles again, like he worked hard, but Raiders had the ball plenty. I suppose most of the teams he comes up against are going to have the ball plenty as well. That's something to note. With Samuela there, for sure. But definitely some money to be made. He'll go up to sort of 360-odd. Definitely an option. Smitty's, 538. 18K made last week. It'll be another 20-odd. That's good news. Obviously, got some cash making for myself. But at 46, when you're comparing it to Hosking, it's, uh, you know, he, he, he more than doubled him, which is crazy. And I had to pay an extra 60K to get Hosking. So that's the sad part out of that when you're comparing, but again, we shouldn't compare guys. Come on, don't compare yourself to others. 46, uh, full 80 minutes. That's the good news here is that he's going to be like, and they didn't even run anywhere near him in the last 15 minutes. Like the Tigers just going down the left, going down the right. And Smithy is just hanging in the middle, doing his thing as he should do. But um, again, no tackle breaks, no offloads. Come on, son. Free the arms, free the arms. But um, no, it's not what we expect from him. We expect him to be, me- be meat and potatoes and it's exactly what he's provided. And I'm, very happy overall with having him in my side. What's going to happen next week? I suppose that's the question mark. And is it a 60-minute role? Playing 80 in the middle now in these games really puts him in front of mind for Ricky. Like, he didn't even look at him and go, no, nah, you you don't need to. You need to have a rest, whatever else. He's like, nope, you're our guy. Even up 20, get ready. Get used to playing 80 minutes. It kind of says that. It could also mean he's, he's in a 60s role. Either way, I think it's good. And he's got... Yeah, decent amount more money to make. I don't think he'd buy now because he's already up about 40-ish. But holding him should be good, I'm hoping. Ethan Strange, guys, try a saver and a try 
as well with five tackle breaks. So much better on that front. A couple of missed tackles, a couple of penalties. He was pretty hyped when he tackled um, Staines. Yeah, whoever it was. Over the sideline. Unfortunately, hit him in the head. So didn't work out. But um, yeah, he's, he's fun to watch, isn't he? Because he, really he really gets into it. He's super excited when blokes were scoring tries. Um, more than when he scored his try. So that's that. But 44 gets his price rolling. And if you just had him in your starting center, which is... Could have been the, the plan for me. If I didn't go Taylor May, it would have just been starting strange. Um, so as I said, it's just so small decisions, guys, that, that change your team so much. And it, it's fine. It, it'll come back around eventually. I'll get some luck soon. And that'll be sweet. Galvin, we spoke about him. Awesome work. Awesome work. Twali, Timiko, 40, 40 each. Uh, Timiko, just so you know that you're going to get somewhere around this for him. So that's helpful to keep his price. We'll talk Manu, 38. Got a sim bin as well, so... Back in the mid 40s, expected from him. Bateman at 36, so not his best game at all, guys. And this is going to happen sometimes in this type of team. But you know, what do you have? Four offloads, two to hand, two to ground. One of them should have been a try. That um, it was a lovely try uh, offload to Buller, who dropped it. So it could have been a try assist there. There's, there's things that go either way. It could happen for Bateman, and it goes great. But um, yeah, that's um, that's how it goes. For that 136, you're not worried, but us non-owners, you are looking at his price drops and, and seeing what happens from there. Jordy Raps in my team as well. Just another sort of average score. Got whacked in the neck and then stayed down. Raps, Tohu, all of you guys, if you don't want to go off the park, don't stay down. As soon as they see you staying down, just get up and walk around and do like, oh, check your ear like Tohu was. Like it was bleeding and stuff, obviously. So you got whacked, but like, Geordie, get up and like, unless you actually can't breathe, and if you can't breathe or whatever, then you probably have to go off anyway, but like, get up first. That's the annoying thing. And they're like, oh, I can't believe I'm going off. Just get up. <laughs> you know that they're looking for any type of lying motionless, any type of like chilling out. That's it. It came on for two minutes at the end and got one tackle. So happy days now. Um, got the try. Thank I'm thankful to Hosking for that. Appreciate it, Zach, for that lovely offload for his try. A uh, couple of couple of weeks in a row now, just getting that that try to help him out. But maybe just him being that year older, he's not getting those ridiculous runs, or he's been told just to put away some of those runs. And and because they're just rolling forward really nice, they don't need him to do as much. That's probably where the thinking is. But a couple of four uh, effective in goals, efigs, effective out of the in goal um, as well. So like he had a good game as a footy player, but that last third, sort of thirteen minutes might have got him into the forties. Had some potential for some type of attacking stat. And that's what we needed. But 36, he does make a little bit more money here. But um, overall, it's been like a, a solid purchase. A 40 average for wraps. It's just solid. And that's kind of my team at the moment. All the scores are just solid without being great. And um, yeah, cash cows are making money. That's all we're here for. <laughs> um, taps with 35. So be aware of him, guys, that you know, prices might start to drop a little bit, but yeah, 23 tackles, didn't have to do a lot. Still got good minutes, like 52 is fine for him. We used to him about the 49, so the extra three is good. Uh, Dave Clemmer, lower minutes there. Savage 35, so if you do own him, you got two try, two line breaks, a try assist, and a try for 35, so that's annoying. How do you have two line breaks and you only get 94 meters? So that's what we're looking at with, with a Savage on that wing. Hudson Young, another low-ish score for him, so we'll lose a bit on that. Keep an eye out over the next few weeks. Albert Hapawadi, 32. Salo, 30. Worked hard in his time out there. We had Buller, 29. So he's just going to keep losing cash for a bit until the Tigers get good. Seb Chris, 29. So he had a, a pretty good game overall, to be honest with you. 29 in 48 minutes. You're very happy with that. Looking closer to a 40 in his 80 on the park, but did fail a HIA. So that's sad news. He is out next week. Hopefully, that means you can just hold him for the week. Play Strange, play Trevojevic. Hopefully he gets through today um, and then go from there. Danny Levi, hey? The man just keeps scoring tries, but an offload, no tackle breaks, 21 tackles, five misses. He really needs to up that tackle number. It's not great. It's not great. But um, yeah, in this type of game, plenty of points on their side. Whew. They, um, sorry guys, tired obviously. Just wake up and get into them. So there you go. Uh, 36 tackles, but five misses. Oh, sorry, 36 run meters. Five misses, 21 tackles. You can tell we're at the, the end of the video. Um, but yeah, 58 meter, mi minutes is great again. The score of 26, not great. Does make a little bit more on that, but uh, we need more. We need more, and I'm worried that we won't get more when he scores 
uh, if he doesn't score a try, which is going to happen eventually. Sullivan played the 55, as I said, and you know, Caesar came on and played the other 25. I wonder how long this is going to stay happening for. Staines, Mariotta, low points for, for Mariotta. Unfortunately, same for Junior Tupo, 16 across his two games. Is he already with the um, with the Dolphins? Not sure, or Titans, wherever he ended up. Uh, Fatape, uh, 15 for him. Not great, but he's in a terrible Tigers team, so that's that. Staffatoa out next week, so expect um, Fata Ape to, to keep his spot in this side for another week with Toa being uh, with Toa being out for this one. I suppose, yeah, Caesar's going to lose some cash, so if there's injuries around eventually, he could be a guy to buy. And then Alex Safarth, if you um, end up going for him, he got hooked fairly early. One, you know, 16 run meters, two inside 10 penalties, three missed tackles in 22 minutes. That's not good enough. Look, he probably gets bigger minutes next week, but if I bought, I'm not holding my breath. Let's be honest. You can go straight to Galvin. There's there's heaps of guys you can look at. Like we'll see how Tommy Talal goes today, right? But um, yeah, heaps of guys you can look at. So just do it. I think you just probably have to trade him out. You can't hope that he gets more minutes because that was yuck. And they played, you know, Pole more minutes at that. Uh, he went, he went what, 58 minutes. So he played the other 13 minutes and they're probably ha- more happy with him anyway. So that's that guys. We're going to leave the Saturday review at that one. Two games to go. They're actually pretty late today at like four and six o'clock in Sydney time. So got to have to wait so long for the games today. So we've got Tommy Turbo season and May season. So that's going to be a fun game. That's for sure. And then, um, yeah, the Dolphins Dragons, if you've got any players in that back end game, I'm not sure there will be, but there might be one or two, the Sullies and the Flanagans and the like. So That's where we're at, guys. I hope you are enjoying these. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video.